Take your hand and put it on your face. Now imagine your hand is a parasite, a lot like a tick, but instead of sucking out your blood, it's liquefying one of your internal organs and sucking part of that out of your body. If you were a honeybee, you wouldn't have to imagine. You'd know this nightmare all too well already. I'm talking about the parasitic mite Varroa destructor. And no, the name isn't overly dramatic. This is one crazy parasite. Pesticides may currently dominate the discussion on why our honeybees are dying in such high numbers, but the science is clear that Varroa destructor is the main reason for it. And this is definitely something that we should be concerned about. How many of you had coffee this morning? You have honeybees to thank for that, as well as one third of every bite of food that reaches your mouth. So it may surprise you to find out that with Varroa being so important to the health of such a vital organism that we don't know what they're eating when they attach themselves to bees. It's been accepted as if axiomatic that Varroa feed on the bee's blood. But while looking through the body of research, I found that we've been citing a study for nearly half a century that never actually proved that. Enter my project. The goal was to figure out what Varroa is eating. I started with the question, where do they feed? If they can feed anywhere on a bee, the way that a tick can on you, then they're probably feeding on blood. However, if they feed only in one spot, maybe they're eating a tissue specific to that location. The results? They fit only in one spot, on the underside of the bee's abdomen. The tissue in this area is called the fat body, and this is significant because the fat body doesn't just store nutrients. It detoxifies pesticides, regulates hormone levels, it produces the honeybee's primary immune response to microbial invaders, and that's just four of its nine functions. So, I stained the bee's fat body and blood with fluorescent tissue-specific biostains and recorded what we found to the mites. While they did ingest some blood, the vast majority of their meal was fat body. Then I needed to determine which of these tissues was integral to Varroa's survivorship and reproduction. I did this by allowing them to feed on decoy bees that I constructed and filled with blood or fat body. Varroa-fed blood died quickly and produced very few eggs, no different from the group that was starved. However, those fed fat body were the only ones able to survive the full seven-day duration of the study, and they produced six times more eggs. So it appears we had it wrong. We've been thinking of these parasites as vampires, when they're actually more like werewolves. And maybe we've had so little success in killing them because we've been trying to drive a stake through something for which we needed a silver bullet. Now, we're investigating the question of whether we can introduce an agent into the fat body that will disrupt the reproductive cycle of Varroa when they feed. Hopefully, these findings will lead to a day when this parasite is affectionately called the crisis formerly known as Varroa destructor.